How was the waiver that the NFL gave to Kaepernick different from what they would have given to any other free agent walking into tryout? Well, because it had a certain clause in it that said you cannot take any action for anything that takes place inside of the grounds, and not just injury. And that the negotiation that took place between Collins Camp and the NFL was, okay, well, let's just use the standard injury clause, I mean, the standard injury waiver that everyone uses. But this was a different, this was a different document. This document said that you cannot take any action about anything, any and all actions that occur. And what they're really talking about is what happens after Colin works out. Suppose he sits down with the NFL with a team, any given team, and that team asks you, if we sign you, do you plan on kneeling? And if you say, and if Colin Kaepernick said, yes, I plan on kneeling, and then suddenly he doesn't get signed, then he has waived his right to take any action as a collusion lawsuit because right then and there, that question is collusive. Moreover, I'm thinking, what if one team talks to another team and, and says, hey, exactly let's not do this, right. there's a collusion that you That's need. Right. So then I guess the other question that leads from that is, if the NFL reached out to him to set this up, why would the NFL then try to shoehorn something like this into a waiver, considering the fact that they could have just said, look, we're just not going to call him and have a workout. Let's just let well, things be on, the way they yeah, are. And on top of that, that, do you really think that Colin Kaepernick's camp is not going to vet that clause? Right. This whole thing, Ryan, goes back to Tuesday, last Tuesday, when Kaepernick's team gets the phone call from the NFL. And the, and the call essentially says, there's a workout for you on Saturday. You have two hours to agree, take it or leave it. So totally out of the blue. Totally out of the blue. These two sides had not spoken since February when they settled the collusion lawsuit. So you've got these two sides that have had two years, three years of animosity. They settle a collusion lawsuit. They do not speak for the entire rest of the year. And then out of the blue, you get this phone call saying, here's the deal, take it or leave it. So th I understand the argument that if you want to play in the NFL, if, you're take if you want to be taken seriously, you've got to be at this job interview. I get that part. On the other hand, nobody in their right mind, and certainly nobody with representation, would have signed these, this deal with the parameters that we're within right now, simply because Kaepernick's team said, we just don't have enough time to make this thing work. Give us some time. Let's do this the right way. The NFL said no. Let's talk about the job interview. And obviously, a lot of people out there have heard all the talk on ESPN about yeah. different aspects of what people think about that. OK, so you got the opportunity. You come in. Colin Kaepernick walks in with the Kunta Kinte t-shirt. He says things about the league stop running from the truth. Some would argue he did himself no favors. So let's Many talk would that. argue that. Yes, yes. So, so I guess my point is, if he wanted to get back in the league, why use that kind of language? Why have that kind of situation? Well, because Colin Kaepernick is, is provocative. And this is Yeah, the but, way... but still, a lot of people are provocative. But still, when they walk in the employment door, if, I, if I'm provocative, but I sit down across from an ESPN counterpart trying to get a long-term job from them... I'm not going to start yelling at them. I'm, yeah, I'm going to do but, what I have to do to get the job. But you're also not going to do, you're not going to walk into a, a job interview with ESPN on top of having three years of collusion, bad mm. blood. I mean, so it's not like the NFL is innocent here. It's not as if you walk in and it's a clean job interview. You've got history here. You've got not only do you have a lack of trust, but you've got a lack of truth in terms of what is taking place between how these two sides have communicated with each other over the last several years. Is it fair for him to ask for truth from the NFL when I think if you canvass a lot of NFL players, they'll say, hey, I don't always believe the NFL is honest with me, but this is what I have to it's do to play in the league. It's 100% fair for him. Mm -hmm. And the reason, once again, is because of these extraordinary circumstances. It's, okay. it's not like, okay, you give us a call, we're going to put you at wide receiver, and then you actually put me at slot. It's not that. It yeah. is you have been denied employment to the point where we needed to take litigation. We had to take, we had to take action against you. So the, I don't think you can underestimate just how much distrust these two sides have. A couple seconds left. What do you think he feels needs to be done for him to play in the NFL again? I think what he needs, well, I think what needs to be done is that you need a maverick. Mm -hmm. You need some NFL owner to say, we are going to accept you as you are, as Colin Kaepernick. And on the other hand, what we ask of you is that you give us your best professional effort. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.